It's been 11 years since Roy Keane was a Premier League football manager. Sure, he still spent his time stuck on the bench beside Paul Lambert and then Martin O'Neill for five years, in between looking as always about to throttle anyone who disagreed with him in punditry. Oh, and let's not forget the virtual single-handed implosion of Ipswich Town, with half the players not taking too kindly to his managerial tactic of telling them that they were unable to trap a football, but in fairness, Jack Colbeck is about as much use as an empty crisp packet. It's been over a decade since Keane was a top-flight football manager. Let's take a look at his final 11 in December 2008, a 4-1 home defeat at Sunderland Bath to Bolton Wanderers. Craig Gordon. At the time, Craig Gordon was the most expensive goalkeeper in British history, at a modest £9 million. A fine keeper, the man was so injury prone he'd probably pull a hamstring getting out of the bath. Injuries weren't his only problem at the club, although Jermaine Defoe nearly ended his career. Gordon never really regained Keane's trust from conceding 7 at Everton, but in fairness, when you throw the ginger grenade that is Paul McShane in front of him, what do you expect? He signed for Celtic in 2014, gained some form, and even nearly signed for Chelsea. He didn't, and they signed Rob Green instead, a man who honest to God must be nearly 50 at this stage. Phil Barsley. It's a sad indictment of his limited footballing abilities that will remember Phil Barsley more for pretending to knock out Wayne Rooney in his kitchen floor. The former Man United product spent six years at Sunderland before leaving for Stoke in 2014 and signed for Burnley last year. To have spent virtually his entire career in the top flight, he has dodged so many relegations his agent probably deserves a medal. Nyra Nosworthy I actually interviewed Nyra Nosworthy when he's at Portsmouth. Considering they were stuck in the dregs of League 2, he did not seem pleased to be there. Never a great defender, he lasted seven years at Sunderland after somehow surviving the cull after finishing bottom of the league on 15 goddamn points. Again, like Barsley, his agent deserves a knighthood. He's since bounced around Watford, Blackpool, Pompey before finishing up at Dagenham and Redbridge in 2016. I think being interviewed by an annoying Irish kid in a sweaty room on the south coast was probably what broke the camel's back for poor old Nyvern. Danny Collins. Let's be honest, Danny Collins was never Premier League quality. So quite why Stoke City signed him the following summer, I'll never understand. The 12-time Welsh international was back in the Championship soon enough, with Nottingham Forest, Rotherham, and now at the age of 38, he's at Grimsby. A town which was probably united with Kazakhstan in their hatred of Sasha Baron Cohen and his devastation of the tour industry. Although to be fair, who the hell would want a holiday in Grimsby? Pascal Jambanda. Regarded as one of the worst professionals out there, Paul Jewell once said he played a game against Arsenal with a transfer request stuffed down his sock. I'm surprised Keane didn't end up putting this young man in a sandwich. The former Spurs right back was spat out after six months, returning to White Hart Lane the following month for some bizarre reason. Since then he's played for seven different clubs, including the likes of Carlisle and Marco Drayden Town. This was a man who was once stuck on the bench when Zidane nearly won France in the World Cup, and yet he finished his career playing for non-league Washington, a suburb in the northeast of England where Jordan Pickford was born. Steve Mulbrank. Steve Mulbrank once turned down the move from Fulham to Man City because he didn't want to live in the north of England. Three years later, he was practically hibernating on the edge of Scotland. On a side note, I wonder if the weather would have played any factor at City Aston four years later when they had a bit of cash. I think not. Mulbrank left Sunderland for Saint Etienne in 2011, with many claiming it due to his son having cancer. No, for one thing, the lad didn't even have a son. He was back tearing up for Lyon the following year and retired last year at MDA Chasselet. I can't speak French. Dean Whitehead. The only shining light in that god awful 15 point season. Dean Whitehead was following Collins to Stoke as well. He lasted four seasons there, two in the Championship at Middlesbrough, helped Huddersfield get promoted before bowing out last year. Andy Reid. A technically fine player with a wand of a left foot. This was a man who gave Eamon Dunphy about six headaches a year. The original Wes Hoolan. The pundit probably went home and cried to his wife when he wasn't in the team. He left Sunderland in 2011 and ended his career with first club Nottingham Forest, playing out the last five years of his career with them. Kieran Richardson. Kieran Richardson's finest moment in Sunderland shirt was undoubtedly his free kick, which brought about the club's first time weird derby win in eight years. Now they can't stop winning those damn games. It was enough to prompt Joe Kinnear to make a bid for the winger, with the former Toon boss unable to wrap his head around the fact that Sunderland probably wouldn't want to sell their star winger to their rivals. Then again, this was Joe Kinnear, a man who probably didn't know his feet from his elbow. Richardson has since played for Fulham, Aston Villa, Cardiff, and at the age of 34, he's now down in his local job centre. Jibro Cisse. A Champions League winner who dresses like a porn star. Amy up in the same team as Dean Whitehead and Nyra Nosworthy. Cisse was a fine player and scored 11 goals on loan that season. Before Panathinaikos took him away in 2009, he since bounced all over but returned to another relegation battle via QPR in 2011. Stayed up once but escaped the following year once the rot set in. He currently plays for AZ Vicenza 1902, whoever the hell they are. Kenwin Jones. A big, strong centre forward, he was the perfect foil for Cissé. Kenwin Jones was sold in 2010, with Stokes snapping him up. Uh, I mean, of course they did. Big Burley looked like he spent every waking moment guzzling creatine and lifting weights. Suits Tony Poulos down to the ground. Cardiff City was next in 2014, before retiring at Atlanta United in 2017.